All right, last time on VO booth, we left the snake and this duck. I love how the snake's name is Serpentine. Like, <laughs> really clever name for a snake. Also, I'm really worried this cutscene's gonna freeze because it froze the very first time I played this game. You didn't say please. Oh my god. Yeah, I told you. I, I don't like his voice that much. But I like his design. Did you ever? Do you ever? Do, did you ever play or watch the cartoon uh, Bucky O'Hare? I've seen it. And there was Dead Eye Duck. That's what that duck reminds me of. So if you like his design, you're gonna be disappointed in a few Aww. minutes again. Fine, be that way. No, no offense to the guy who does his voice. I just don't really like it. Uh, so a thing I forgot to uh, we asked we messed up our first recording, and uh, okay, so this this isn't gonna freeze. Yay! So I messed up. We messed up our first recording. But I did want you to guess what lilac was. Yeah. And what were your three guesses? Uh, it was a fawn, a, a sheep, or a goat. Yeah. By the way, those last two guesses are kind of wastes. <laughs> By guessing a sheep and a goat. Well. Oh, they're different animals. They are slightly different. They are. They're completely different animals. Yeah. I don't know why I thought that. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I bet Justin a dollar he couldn't guess what lilac was. And. Uh, oh no! The duck man comes with me. I'm not gonna let. He did not pass the challenge. Those are his three <laughs> guesses as to what lilac was. What is what? Well, what is she? You'll find out in a few minutes. Does Duckman ask her what she is? Yes. That's so rude. Why would you, oh, you do know that? What? No, he doesn't. He doesn't ask her. He does say something even more rude though later about about Carol. No, Carol just flat out says what she is. That was a close one. Thank you, Miss um... Lilac. Miss Lilac. <laughs> Are you okay? I saw a huge explosion back there. You've been following me this whole time, haven't you? Duh. <laughs> I take it you know this guy. Girl. This girl. Yeah, so that's the rude thing he said. <laughs> Aww. I don't know. I don't get that joke, though, because she's obviously a girl. Carol the Wildcat. Ah, you're a uh, and this is my wildcat. Wildcat, nice. Dork. I'm a shell duck. Shell duck? Shell duck? <laughs> it's more of a nickname. I'm not exactly from Again, around. you're going to be disappointed later if you like his design. <laughs> Did they say what she was? No, he, they'll say in a second. Okay. So what are you doing out here? The skies haven't been. Someone is about to steal the kingdom. Did I just read that? I I, I'm saying. No, I, I have. I, no. Well, the thing is, you have to click to make the text progress. Gotcha. So if it cuts off, it's my fault. No, it's all good. Yeah. Okay, I thought that's what she just said. This place isn't exactly safe for drugs. So you notice uh, they mentioned stealing. She mentions that she could steal yeah. it. So there's this kind of side plot where it mentions that they used to be thieves, but they don't. It, they they don't really go too deep in it, mm. and it's sort of like completely, uh, I don't know. It, they don't talk about it as much as I think they should. It, it's subplot, man. Yeah, and it actually, like, it affects people's opinions of them. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, he's about to mention what All right, let's Lilac is. Yep, I've got a motorcycle, and she's a dragon. A dra Dude, that's not fair. <laughs> I didn't ask you what animal she was. I just asked you what she was. Oh. If I had I known fantasy creatures were available, I would have totally not guessed dragon, but at least I would have an idea. Now I the dragon horns, I get it now. I mean, by no means does she look like a dragon, but... Yeah, apparently, I mean, she apparently, I didn't follow... I was gonna say demon. I flat out was gonna say demon, but like, oh, that's not a creature. I didn't even say creature. Uh, oh, this guy's cool. Is he a panda? Yeah. I love pandas. You're right, these are really long cutscenes. Oh, this is not even the longest. What is the meaning? No, I hate that girl. Because you have to fight her later, and she is a once you figure out what she does, it's not that hard, but Oh, by the way, her bowing animation is her pooping animation. It, she doesn't poop, but it just looks like a pooping animation. Don't make me repeat myself. It's funny because the characters bow so much in this game because they're a bunch of like royalty figures they talk to. Gotcha. But they don't the they didn't make a separate sprite for it. They just made it their ducking animation. So it's just kind of like every time they're, up, you know, Lilac's talking to someone who's a, you know, status. She looks like she's about to take a dump. Yeah. Kind of like a dog where, you know, you hear about how one of the problems with dogs is that they pee because they are submitting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Then again, the Lilac is not a dog. She's a dragon, as we just found out. <laughs> So this story is kind of hard to follow, I think, despite its lengthy cutscenes. It just doesn't explain things super well. Right. So what's happening is that there's this guy named, um, Gen I think he's a mayor, uh, Mayor Zhao, spelled Z-A-O. Okay. 
And so that little stone they were talking about the opening cutscene, he apparently is trying to steal it. He is not a member of those bad guys we saw in the opening cutscene. Gotcha. He is just someone else. <laughs> okay. And we'll meet him later. That's the confusing thing, is that you don't meet him until... This is very much similar to Sonic's... What's that one Sonic stage? The, uh... Aquatic Ruin? Yeah. No, that's not the one I'm thinking of. Also, uh, there are a few things that are, like... Like, ob not obstacles, but, uh... Stage features that are directly lifted from Sonic. Mostly uh, platform stuff, and I'll, sh I'll, sh I'll point them out when they come. Not really that, but... It is the Ruins, you're right, Aquatic Ruins. Yeah. This is actually called Relic Maze. If you didn't, if you didn't see the uh, the opening thing, <laughs> and I didn't point this out to you because I didn't want the uh, I didn't want you to guess right about what Lilac was. <laughs> but the opening stage was called Dragon Valley. Uh, okay. So if you've been paying attention and yeah. <laughs> watching the opening title cards, you would have known she was a dragon. <laughs> I don't. Okay, people name things dragon without it being actually about a dragon. Okay. Yeah. Dragons are just cool. I'm just saying. Although I I always think it's a little funny when uh, anyone nicknames themselves Dragon. A little bit. I don't know why. <laughs> okay. I just think it's like why name yourself after a creature like a, a fantasy creature that you know has so many different varieties. You know. Maybe that's why because they can get away with it. Yeah. I mean it's like it's like the banana slugs. You know. Why would you name yourself a banana slug besides the comedic value? So the way to uh to oh. oh. One thing you might have noticed, it, it was like a split second thing. Actually, you know what? I'll point it out next room. Okay. Um, but you'll notice I paused when I was going to that room, and I'll explain why later. But it's a pet peeve I have with this game. Okay. Actually, let's explain now. So basically, when you enter a new area, like when it fades out and fades in, normally you would... Uh, I feel like in most games, if uh, you know, you hold right, right? Mm-hmm. Are you... Yeah, you're holding right. And so you would just be like, oh, the game's just going to move me to the right once I uh, start playing the game again. For some reason, and maybe it's because I'm playing on 1.0 and maybe they've updated it since. Mm. But for some reason, when you enter a new area, it kind of eats up your inputs. So even if I'm holding right, it'll just make me stick there. Oh, interesting. I'll try to show it off better when we get into the next room. Okay. But... What? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So this boss is a pain in the ass to fight if you f try to fight him normally, but if you just push this on him, it kills him immediately. <laughs> uh, Secrets. Yeah, and so that's how you... Uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm going into these different rooms and unlocking this door in the main area. Now, do you actually use those crystals to buy anything, or is this just like rings, which is basically just an extra life concept? Mm, no, this is... So if you look where my lives are, uh -huh. um, you'll see it's actually counting down, which is actually kind of neat. Oh, it is. And when it counts down to zero, you get an extra life. Okay. The thing I discovered late in the game when I started losing a lot of lives is that this game has the most pointless life system ever. Yeah. I'll explain after I explain this input eating. Okay. So I'm holding right right now. Like, I was holding right the entire time oh, I entered this room. And it, it just it ate up my input. Gotcha. That's annoying. Yeah, it is. It's annoying. I, I feel like some people would think that's nitpicky, but it, it really is annoying. It's, it's optimization, I feel. Yeah. And it's like, and you know, it's... it And Sonic games don't transition between areas, really. Right. So it can get... A, I don't know if Sonic games are technically programmed to work that way, but they get away with it. Actually, I don't think that... I don't know. I don't know anything about the programming in Sonic, but... It's, you know, it's just me being... You know, it's just a little thing. Sure. It's just a little... It's This game's rough around the edges, I, I, I should say. But, oh, well, I, was, I was talking about the life system. Right. So the life system is kind of pointless. <laughs> Do you have endless continues? You have, yeah, you have unlimited continues. And I can almost understand that if there's like a checkpoint, you have, if you didn't restart from a checkpoint after a continue, but you just basically start, start back from a checkpoint. So it, it's no different. Like the only difference between having to continue and having to use a life uh -huh. is just the continue cutscene where it's down to, you know, 10, and then you have to press A before it hits 10, and it's like, oh, no, nope, I'm back in this game. <laughs> but you're an anti-life system anyways, aren't you? Well, no, I'm... It, it's funny, we've talked about this many times. It's I'm against life systems that don't have a point. So, a Mega Man game, lives are hard to come by, so they actually have value. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it life system actually works, because lives, like, lives are hard to find. 
when you have to use a continue or whatever, you don't start back right from a checkpoint. I mean, I start at the beginning of the level. Um, so I feel like lives are given value, if there's a difference between continue and lives, so it actually works. A game like Mario 3D World, I don't agree with the life system because lives are so easy to come by. Right. So they have no value. So it's kind of like, well, why why bother? Like, there's literally, I think in Mario 3D World, there's literally one level, which is like the very last bonus level. Yeah, this, where, like, this level looks awesome. <laughs> where you could lose uh, a lot of lives at once. Yeah, this level is awesome. So you fight this guy. And so one mistake a lot of people make is they'll try to jump over these beginning lasers, and I'll show you what happens when you do. Yeah. They try to jump over them and oh, you just gotcha. get hit. What you really need to do is just stand, like, stand completely still for these first two lasers, and then just jump over this one. And then he tries to... Yeah, like, I've died to this guy a few times before I really thought about it, yeah. and then... Like, even then I instinctively jumped, even though I knew I wasn't supposed to. I think you you instinctively don't think you can dodge the lasers just by moving around because you don't move very fast, you know? Yeah, and in most- and that's the thing though, in most game- oh, that actually hit me, because I was too close. But yeah, it's uh- that's the thing about these bosses though, is you just kind of have to know their attack patterns, and that's kind of the big th way to beat them. Yeah, you gotta learn, learn the timing. Yeah, which is why I totally disagree with all those people who are like, you need to make the bosses easier, and then they gimp the bosses. That was- that's the more difficult boss? No, this is- that boss wasn't more difficult. Oh. I'm just saying that- That level's over? Damn, that was like the best part so far. I, I like I like the music in this little part right here where you actually go down each level uh, well most of the levels in this game are kind of divided into two parts this is still the same level right it doesn't restart the counter gotcha whoa, whoa. but there's a secret up here it doesn't restart the counter but I mean it's kind of in the Sonic vein where Sonic kind of formally divides them into acts right but they don't, um, this game doesn't. But it's still like, this is still like Act 2. Like, this is clearly like a different... Yeah, yeah, yeah. ...kind of area of Relic Kingdom or whatever. So yeah, that's just kind of a little way this game is a little bit different than Sonic, but not really. I do like the art style. It's kind of fun. Yeah, this, no, this, this game is great. I said in the opening that if you like Freedom Planet, you need to forgive me for all the horrible things I'm going to say about it. <laughs> that's, that's, that's just how I do things on this on this channel. But <laughs> okay. So this is this is straight from Sonic. Oh yeah, totally. I forget what exactly level that little platform is from. They 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 appear uh, in multiple levels in, in Sonic two or three. I think it's three. I know there's like a specific level from that. No, no, I think what you might be thinking of, though, are those little swinging things. Mm -hmm. And it... Oh, those little swinging things are, like, in Green Hill Zone. Yeah. Those are definitely... Oh, those are, those are straight Yeah, those definitely too. show up later. Um, I think in the fourth level. Well, that was... That was harrowing. Yeah. Uh, you lose a decent amount of damage from those spikes. Not... It's not instant kill. It's not instant kill? No, not All like... All spikes it. are supposed to be instant kill. That's how the world works. That... That is a... That is blasphemy that was <laughs> perpetuated by Mega Man. <laughs> it's funny, Yahtzee's review of Shovel Knight, that was like his one criticism, was uh, he, oh. thought, he thought spikes... Oh, that was cool. One hit kill spikes were archaic or something. And at the very... Once he said that, he was like, yes, I did have to dig very hard for that complaint. <laughs> That's also a weird thing, that is when you... That was cool that you could use the environment to kill the enemies, though. Yeah, that's... that. It doesn't happen too often, but it happens often enough that it's... it's Yeah, it's cool. That's neat. I like that. That little thing can hurt you. Bad. Yeah. I don't think I've been to this part of the level. Oh. Uh, one of the things I don't like about the shields is that you... The shields actually last for more than one hit. It's just really hard to know when you've been hit by a shield. Right. The shields kind of just, uh, there isn't a lot of, like, visual feedback for when the shield's taking a hit. There's, like, a small sound, but a lot of times, especially if you're in, a, like, a hectic area, the sound gets, it, it gets covered up. Mm. So this is kind of cool. Like, again, the, the arena for its enemies. That's cool. So it just kind of, I don't know why the game, they do it for this section, since there's no way for the enemies to even touch yeah. you. But I think there is just trying to be cool. She's like, hey guys, here's a neat little thing. Like, Things are killing, happening. They're killing the enemies for you. Yeah. It's actually a neat little uh, 
contrast to what's about to happen, where it's like, oh, hey, the spikes are awesome. They killed enemies for you. Uh, and it's like, no. Oh, and now they're back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so see, I, but now all the enemies are already gone. Well, it helps you. It, it means you're not going to just run into an enemy. And Actually, you know what? Now, now I think about it, that is cool if they kill the enemy, so that it does show the contrast of, like, spikes are helpful. And, like, nope, <laughs> spikes aren't helpful. <laughs> My pet peeve for a lot of games is doing stuff like this where you have to unlock a door by going into different doors. Right. So I think the way you beat this guy, you can just hit this guy's jewel by... Oops. Kick him, I, in, kick him in the family jewels. Another way you can beat that guy is you if you you can stand on his back. I think I, I, I showed it at the very beginning. You stand yeah, on his yeah. back and he hits his back. I think you actually get an achievement if, you kill, if he lands the killing blow that way. What's a little red thing? Oh, that was just the way to open the door. I'm going through this game pretty quickly. <laughs> no worries. So I'm trying to not run out of things to explain. This boss coming up is... It was kind of my first roadblock. It took me a few times to beat him. Just because I didn't know his pattern. But once you figure out his pattern... And there's also like some health power-ups in his room too. So coming up... Also, before the boss, is a character who apparently is going to become a playable character in the future. It's part of the stretch goals Ooh. for the Kickstarter. This guy named Spade. Is he the third character? No. But he will be a character in the future, as well as the Shell Duck. Nice. In wow. a future update. Oh, is that a she? So, no, it's no, a guy. It's a, it's okay. a guy. Sorry, the bangs threw me off. I have no idea what he is, though. He's like probably some sort of cat. He looks very cat-like. He has the cat-like eyes. Yeah, so apparently they have some history with this guy, like... I guess they were part of this organization called the Scarves, that were thieves or something. That makes sense. You've left me no but they, again, it's kind of like... I guess a lot of stuff will probably be explained in his story mode. Well, if you notice, they're both wearing red scarves, Carol and him. Yeah. I'm sure that's not relevant. A, yeah, it's not a coincidence. Yeah, I mean, I think they talk about it a little bit more. The other thing is that when I first played through this game, like, I just couldn't stand some of the cutscenes, so I skipped, I kind of just pressed A, or, you know, just kept clicking through them. Right. <laughs> so, we'll some of the, the exposition I might have missed. <laughs> but I, I still kind of wish they went. There's a lot of wasted scenes in this game that I feel they could have spent more time talking about more relevant things. But, you know, it's okay. Huh? Wow, we're still on the same level. <laughs> oh, this is a boss. Okay, cool. Oh, dude. The boss designs are pretty cool. Yeah, this guy's awesome. I like him way more than Snake. <laughs> so, a mistake I made a lot when I was first finding this. It's Mecha Scyther. Oh, man. No! You made it. That The thing I, the only thing I really dislike is when bosses slam down, there's slowdown, which oh, I think yeah. is intended to give you time to run out of the way. No! <laughs> One of those things blocked me. Oh, this isn't a level where you can run up walls. Darn. <laughs> I thought it was. It's it's cool when you can do it. Is it random? What? No, no, no. It's not random. It's oh, okay. just... I forgot. Some levels, the boss arenas, you you know, have slopes at the top, so oh, you can okay. run up them. Gotcha. And it's helpful for avoiding attacks. This one, not so much. But yeah, I love the boss music with this guy. It's pretty cool. This, if you can believe it, though, the third boss is even cooler <laughs> of the third stage. Actually, you know what? The third stage might be my favorite stage overall. Awesome. I might let you play that stage, actually. Oh, God. Yeah, let's let's give Justin a chance after uh, <laughs> this is over. 30 minutes later. Yeah. When he uh, throws his little scythe things, those uh, well, those can hurt you. And also when he digs them in, those rocks coming out can hurt you. So a okay. uh, big rookie mistake is to go after him when he's doing that. <laughs> Also, uh, I forgot to mention, but when you are doing your your dash, when you're going through that fast, you can actually do your kick move oh, and cool. not lose momentum. Nice. I don't use it that often, but it's it's handy. It's actually really handy against the final boss. So wait, do you have to get his arms dead and then hit his head? Yeah, it's like I explained in the first episode, where like with the snake, you right. have to. Uh, it's kind of about hitting the weak point and then. But you've already killed his arm more than once. He, he he's a kind of a robot thing though, so he you know it comes back. All right. Um, so then you have to start over. I gotta say, yeah, but you're slowly making progress. Okay. You just gotta hit. You gotta hit his face it like four times or something. I have to say, I love uh, not love, but 
Actually, I'll, I'll say love. I really do like this, uh, the philosophy behind these boss fights compared to Sonic games. Because right. Sonic games, and, and in Mario games too, because those games, it revolves around a lot around uh, waiting around for the boss to show their weak point. Whereas in this, like, you are waiting to, you know, hit his head. I might actually die on this because I'm not uh, doing you're, as well. You're not focused. This thing, though, you're constantly moving and trying to hit his weak point, so you're never really, like, not doing anything. Right. So I feel like this type of boss design where you're... where you're just trying to constantly outmaneuver the boss, and, like, even though technically you're only hitting his weak point at certain times... Dude, he's got a cool voice, too. It's very, uh, Jurassic Park T-Rex. Oh, you should just do that, dude. That seemed like it was very effective. It was. It's just you have to charge up. And also, it... If you uh, mistime it, like when he's jumping, it actually doesn't work that well. It's a it's a safe way to do it, but you have a good chance of missing if he. Uh... Yeah, see, I just I initiated it right when he was about to jump. Right, your bar does charge up pretty fast though. Oh, you got it! You got it! There you go. There we go. Okay, I took care of him. Nice. I usually do it a little faster, but it's okay. Great job. Oh man! Oh no! You... He is a load-bearing boss, though. You know, you know what that means. <laughs> you know, you know the term. You know what load-bearing. Yeah, yes, yes. I have several load-bearing posters in my room. What? what do you know what a load-bearing boss is? Well, I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to test you. So next time on VO booth, we have to hear a yell Carol in a really <laughs> annoying voice. <laughs> See you next time.